All right, welcome back to the Over the Wire Bandit Challenge. In this video, we're going to be get, getting started with level 21, which uh, deals with Cron. So this is going to be very, very interesting. Um, so again, it uh, essentially tells us a program is running automatically at regular intervals from Cron. The time-based job scheduler, which I'm sure you guys are familiar with. So you can schedule various tasks, uh, jobs, uh, based on scripts, uh, programs, etc., to run automatically uh, after a specified amount of time. Um, so we need to look in the cat uh, in the Etsy. Sorry, we need to look in the Etsy cron .d directory for the configuration and see what command is being executed. Um, so if we just do that right now, let's cap the contents here. So cat Etsy cron .d that should actually display. Uh, sorry, we want to list the files here. Uh, we can actually use Vim to navigate in here. So you can see we have uh, cron bandit 22, uh, 23 and 24. So that means uh, if we actually uh, check the contents here, so cat, uh, sorry, we don't, uh, ls etsy cron dot and uh, we hit enter. So you can see we have um, cron job bandit 22 23 and 24 so i'm guessing all uh, these three levels will uh, essentially entail cron so uh, the first thing we want to do is we want to examine the content of this file right so what we want to do is we want to say cat etsy cron uh, dot d and uh, we just hit enter so you can see that uh, it runs this uh, reboot uh, bandit and then it says bandit 22 user bin it runs this uh, this shell script right over here. So again, let's check the contents of this shell script. We hit enter. We can see the first thing is uh, it does is it changes permissions uh, so that uh, we can uh, we can pretty much read uh, uh, we can read uh, all users and groups can read this file. So it's uh, this file is temp uh, and we have this random string here. And then it cats the content of the of the bandit password for the user bandit 22 and it it essentially dumps that into this temp file here so let's actually see if we can access it which we should so this should be very very simple and there we are so we get the password for the next level so we'll move on to bandit 22 here and uh, i'll put in the password and we should have access there we are so uh, moving on to level 22 on bandit and there we are so we, we can see that it tells us a program is running automatically at regular intervals from cron the by the way can we actually access cron tab uh no i i thought so um so the time based job scheduler look in etsy cron.d for the configuration and see what command is being executed so i guess this is for level 23 so we can pretty much do the same thing we did it tells us that looking at shell scripts written by other people is a very useful skill. The script at this level is intentionally made easy to read. That's great. Uh, if you're having problems with understanding what it does, try executing it to see the debug information in print. So this is one of the reasons I really love over the wire challenges is they really have it in, uh, they really set up challenges in an intuitive way. So again, cat etsy uh, cron.d and then we say uh, cron job bandit 23. That's for the next level. Again, it stores the executable or this, uh, the shell script, the cron job shell script in user bin. So let's cut the contents of the shell script. All right, so you can see uh, what it does is it has various variables here and um, it is essentially saying uh, my name is going to be equal to who am I? So it gets the value of who am I? In this, in this case, I'm guessing it's gonna say bandit 23 uh, and then it says um, it uses md5 sum here so what we can do is uh, my target so my target is going to be is going to be essentially your user's home directory so echo I am user uh, bandit 20 22 23 for example and uh, this is going to perform md5 sum on it and it's going to cut some data and it's going to say copying the password file etsy bandit uh, my name so bandit 22 or 23 depending on the uh, the variable um to temp and, and under 
this so that's going to be md5 an md5 sum name because uh, it does it right over here so it then it's then going to cat the contents of that file into temp and it does that essentially what it what it's doing right over here so what we can do is uh, we can say uh, if we change my name if we say my name is equal to bandit first of all let, let, let's actually just display this uh, so if we say my name all right so it doesn't have a value so if we say my name is going to be equal to bandit uh, 23 and we say my name All right, so it tells us it's uh, it's it's uh, it's set to bandit twenty three. So if we run this command here, that should give us this file name. Do we have MD five sum? Let's see. Yeah, so it works. All right, so. Uh, we can actually just run this right now. So we say uh, echo. So it gives us this string here, which is going to be the value. It's going to be the MD5 sum of the of the my name uh, variable, which in this case we set to bandit23. So if we cap the content of this file, when you know it's stored in the temp directory, so we say we hit enter and look we look it looks like we get a password here so let's try that out uh, bandit 23 uh, let's see if that actually works out um, all right so that worked out that was fairly simple um, bandit level 23 um, all right so we're still dealing with cron so a program is running automatically at regular intervals from cron the time based job scheduler Look at the etsy cron.d uh, directory for the configuration. Uh, note this level requires you to create your own first uh, shell script. This is a very big step and you should be proud of yourself when you beat this level. Uh, keep in mind that your shell script is removed once executed, so you may want to keep a copy around. All right, that's interesting. So cat etsy cron.d and we say cron23. We hit and all right, so let's just uh, follow the same procedures as we did before. Let's access the shell script. Uh, sorry, uh, we're looking for 24, not uh, we're looking for the next level. All right, so again, the variable my name, it gets the value of who am I, uh, and then it goes into cd var spool under my name. Uh, okay, let's see, var. Uh, for spool, uh, not not Etsy. Sorry about that. Uh, var uh, spool uh, bandit twenty four. All right, interesting. Let's see what is in that directory. So var spool bandit twenty four uh, cannot open directory. Permission denied. Okay, so uh, this is the script for bandit twenty four. So it's it's doing exactly that. And it's it's being executed after after every minute, I believe. Uh, where did we actually see the? Let's let's actually check it out. So, uh, yeah, after every minute. So, the shell script here is telling us that uh, it. Uh, it executes and deletes all scripts within var spool bandit 24 and then it, it runs a loop here so for i in and then we have the dot file specifier here so do if the counter is specified as a variable is uh, a variable so if i equals dot file uh, and then again double dot file so if there are if there are files in the directory then it says then echo handling the counter here timeout is set to 60 seconds and then it executes the file here all right and then after it's executed it removes the files within that directory and it's done all right so 
uh, what it's doing is it's going to execute all the scripts within that directory. So what we can do is we can create a simple uh, script here. So we say uh, we'll use Vim here and we'll say test dot sh and uh, first of all can we even write changes here can we even write to this directory all right so yeah it looks like we cannot so let's do this uh, in the temp directory so uh, let's see if we still have access to the temp directory so alexis uh, yeah let's remove data here and uh, I'll, uh, get, I think we'll have to create a new we'll have to create a new directory under temp so I'll just say uh, we'll, we'll just call it uh, let's see something simple uh, uh, come on let's just call it hackersploit I'm running out of ideas already exists wow uh, someone's actually already used this anyway uh, that's weird man okay <laughs> I guess that that exists for a reason or well, someone actually did that so let's just uh, create a new directory here and we'll just call it uh, we'll just call it get pass all right that already exists so a lot of people are using these servers I get it I get it so uh, can we create one already exists man that's uh, this is uh, this is unbelievable so can I just say uh, uh, bandit pass can we just call it bandit pass already exists okay so this is getting really annoying now so we'll just say alexis one two three enter uh, that that's really annoying and alexis one two three and we can start getting to work all right so vim test.sh uh sorry um let's actually set up our shebang here bin bash and uh what we want to do is say cat etsy uh bandit pass and bandit 24 so the password we want to export that into tmp alexis123 and uh this script uh, will require specific permissions so i think yeah has it created the file yeah it, it has all right so we'll say chmod we want to make sure any user, any group can execute this. So test.sh. Uh, we can also, let's actually just tech check the script here. Uh, we need, we did not specify the file. So we'll just say pass. We'll just call the file pass. That's where the password will be stored. Uh, and uh, we'll just exit. And um, we can actually create the file now. So we'll say touch and uh we'll give it permissions here we can also just give it ch we'll say ch mod uh mm, we can just say we can give it right permissions so again we can just say seven yeah seven 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 pass and uh, now we have to copy this script into so we say copy test.sh into uh var spool uh, bandit 24 and now we have to wait for one minute and of course uh, uh, the contents or the password will be dumped after one minute so i'm just gonna wait for this to complete uh, in the meantime let's actually just check all right so it tells us keep in mind that your show script will be removed so you may want to keep a copy around all right so let me just copy the code here because uh, that's going to be quite useful in the event this doesn't work. Uh, pass, uh, nothing yet. Uh, so if we execute the, the cron, so if we just say cron, uh, yeah, so we can actually execute the cron job, uh, which is for, for bandit 24, but I guess that will, that will execute it as bandit 23 or the use of bandit 23, and that won't work. So again, let's... Uh, Let's just wait for this to execute. Uh, that's still up. All right. All right. So it looks like we got the password and uh, we can actually exit from here now. And let's get access to level 24. Specify the password there. And there we are. All right. So 
let's access level 24 now. All right, so level 24 now deals with uh, brute force attacks. So again, we want to separate this and I'm going to have this uh, in a different video. So it looks like we're dealing with uh, attacking uh, various ports uh, and, you know, using a brute force attack. So I'll be seeing you in the next video.